Hi, in this video series, I want to create a series of short tutorials on how I create my renders. I broke them up into small chunks because it's easier for me to create, say, a 5 minute video on a specific topic rather than a giant 15 minute tutorial and find out I've missed something important. This allows me to get your feedback and respond to those quickly. Hey, so I wanted to show you how I import LEGO builds in Bricklink Stud.io into Blender. People have posted other ways in doing this, but I find this is by far the easiest way. But this isn't a Blender tutorial. There are other great tutorials out there if you are into learning Blender, so I won't go over the basics of Blender here. So with that, let's get started. We're going to use a third party add-on called Import Outdraw by Toby Nelson. All the links and resources are in the description box below. So to start, we'll need to download and install this add-on for our Blender installation. First, go to the Import LDRAW GitHub page. Under Releases, download the one that matches the Blender version you use. Let's just take the most recent one for now. This will download the add-on as a zip file. To install the plugin, in Blender, under Preferences, go to Add-ons. Click this little down arrow. Click on the install from disk and select the import LDRAW add-on zip file. Once installed, to import a stud.io file, go to File, Import, LDRAW. In the configuration window, we have to configure a few things first. First, we have to provide the LDRAW file path. Toby's plugin takes the data in the IO files, specifically the brick type and location data, to create the objects in Blender. However, the stud.io files do not contain the mesh data for the specific pieces, so we'll need to provide a library of 3D objects for the LEGO pieces. There are two ways you can provide this path. If you are in a hurry, you can point to the BrickLink stud.io parts folder. This is based on the location of where you've installed BrickLink stud.io. Or, you can download the LDRAW.org parts library and unzip the folder to some place on your computer and point import LDRAW to there. Inside, you'll see it has thousands of little DAT files. These are the mesh data for your LEGO pieces. My recommendation is to use the LDRAW parts library. Most parts don't have any differences, but some do, and I found the LDRAW library to have a bit less problems. But also, if you need to replace a mesh or .dat file with a better one, you can do it without worrying that this new .dat replacement file will make stud.io stop opening. That's right, I'll talk about this in the future, but sometimes third-party .dat files, that is custom parts, are not always compatible with stud.io, or at least maybe they were compatible with stud.io at one time, but after a stud.io update, that .dat file could become incompatible and any builds that reference that piece would crash when you try and open that build. So once you have the file path, let's take a look at the other settings. You want to keep the scale at 1. Import LDRAW's scale setting of 1 is the real size of bricks. Choose realistic look and I don't add environment as I have my own background and lighting. I set up my own Blender camera as well, so I keep this unchecked. We can ignore this camera border setting since we're not using imported cameras. Use realistic colors and standard resolution. The accuracy of many high resolution parts are subpar, so I'd stick to using standard resolution. I've only used standard bricks in my videos. I keep this checked. Now we want to use bevel edges. Lego pieces are beveled or rounded, so for realism you'll want to keep this. This has a performance impact however. For bevel width, you can choose something like 0.2 to 0.6. It's a bit of a personal choice, and also note that not all the underlying mesh works nicely with the bevel modifier, so it's a bit inconsistent, having a big effect on some pieces and very little with others. It's something you'll need to play with. I also add a space between each part, and I set the value to something around 0.1 to 0.2, depending on the type of bricks. I use curved wall normals, I don't use import cameras. I do link identical parts. This is an important performance enhancement. I include unofficial parts. If your build shows studs, then you may want to show the LEGO logo. However, this has a performance impact. If your build doesn't actually display the tops of studs because everything visible is either the side of the brick or the tops are covered with plates, 
then you can get away with having this unselected. For performance reasons, keep this unselected. I put the model ground at origin and number each part. The rest of the Blender specific settings you can change if you look into it, but it's not necessary. Just use what I have. If there's a specific setting you use and you think it's better, let me know in the comments. I like to hear. In addition to your import settings, there are two things that have a major impact on your import times. If your build is large, it significantly increases the import time. If your Blender file already contains many bricks, it'll also impact the import time. So if you're working on a large project, there are some things you can try to do to get around this problem. I'll try and cover them in another video. Feel free to leave a comment if you're interested in this. I want to show you a couple things. First, if you go into edit mode and try to move a vertex, you'll see that all the other pieces that share the same piece type and color also get modified. This is because pieces of the same type and color share the same underlying mesh. That is, they are linked. And that's one of the settings when we did the import. Using link duplicates gives you a pretty significant performance boost, so you want to make sure you're using this setting. There's one very important step you want to take. A lot of people say Blender is super laggy after using the plugin, and this is a major reason why. See, if you look at each object, in the modifiers section, you'll see there are modifiers on each object, and you might have thousands of these pieces in your build. These modifiers, specifically this bevel one, causes a major performance impact on your viewport. To fix this issue, you'll want to apply those modifiers. Thankfully, there's an easy way to do this. Click on the root object of your import. Right click and choose Select Hierarchy. Move the mouse to your viewport and, and press Ctrl plus A. This brings up a menu and choose Visual Geometry to Mesh. This is a quick way of applying all the modifiers on your selected object. You should see a noticeable performance increase when moving around the viewport. Of course, this fix is only temporary. If you have a growing city like mine, the viewport will eventually get slow again. That's it for now. I've kept this tutorial deliberately short so you can try it out and ask any questions in the comments. Feel free to let me know what else I should cover. Thanks for watching.